Hey guys, welcome back. This is Dr. Rajeshwar from YR PharmaTube. In the previous videos, we discussed about sedatives and hypnotics. If you did not watch the videos, hit the i button on top right of this video to watch them. For the other topics of medicinal chemistry, click on the links given right below this video. In this lesson, we will start with another type of CNS depressants known as antipsychotics, their introduction, classification, structures and clinical uses. Some important terms that generally come across in this topic and their definitions have been discussed here. Antipsychotic drugs can control psychotic symptoms such as delusions and hallucinations. Delusions are false beliefs that cannot be changed with reason. Hallucinations are false perceptions that are having no basis in reality. Antipsychotics are also used to treat thought disorders that can occur with schizophrenia, mania and other psychosis. They are thus sometimes called as anti-maniac drugs. These drugs have several different names including the antipsychotic, major tranquilizer and neuroleptic. The term antipsychotic is used where they can eliminate signs and symptoms of psychosis. The word major tranquilizer is applied when they calm an agitated patient and the term neuroleptic is employed when they have adverse neurobiological effects that causes abnormal body movements. From the above definitions, we now understand that antipsychotic drugs have been called neuroleptics, antischizophrenic drugs, antimaniac drugs and major tranquilizers. All these terms are synonymous. Neuroleptic and antipsychotic are the most common. These drugs are not curative because they do not eliminate the fundamental thinking disorder but they often permit the patient to function more normally. Psychosis are mental health disorders characterized by aberrant behavior and disturbed emotional states. They include conditions such as schizophrenia, severe agitation and some forms of dementia. The main site of antipsychotic drugs is on neural pathways involving the cerebral cortex and limbic system that is in the central nervous system. The cause of psychosis or the underlying pathophysiology of the psychosis remains unclear. However, excessive activity of catecholamine levels in the cortical and limbic systems that is in the central nervous system is appear to be responsible in the development of schizophrenia and other psychosis. It has been known that people with schizophrenia have a higher urinary output of catecholamine metabolites than the general population. Dopamine appears to be particularly important and drugs that block or reduce the effects of dopamine are effective in treating psychosis, especially schizophrenia. There are at least 5 different types of dopamine receptors identified as D1, D2, D3, D4 and D5. However, the mechanism of action of antipsychotic drugs involves the ability of these drugs to block a specific dopamine receptor, particularly the D2 receptor. This reduces dopaminergic activity by preventing dopamine from binding to and activating its receptors. Excessive blockade of dopamine receptors is the main cause of extrapyramidal syndrome, abbreviated EPS. Serotonin, also known as 5-hydroxytryptamine, is another brain neurotransmitter that is involved in psychotic behavior. There are a number of different 5-hydroxytryptamine receptors, but the receptor identified as 5-hydroxytryptamine 2A is the most important for antipsychotic effects. Antipsychotic drugs primarily antagonize both D2 and 5-hydroxytryptamine 2A receptors. The main difference among the various antipsychotic drug classes is the degree to which they block each of these two neurotransmitter receptors. Antipsychotic drugs also affect other neurotransmitter receptors but these actions are associated with adverse effects. Classification of antipsychotic drugs From the chemical point of view, that is according to the chemical structure, antipsychotic drugs are divided into five groups. Number 1 phenothiazines, number 2 butyrophenones, number 3 thiotexins, number 4 heterocyclics, and number 5 others are miscellaneous antipsychotic drugs. Phenothiazines are also known as tricyclic antipsychotics. 
depending upon the nature of the side chain present in the phenothiazines they are subdivided into the phenothiazines with the alkyl side chain phenothiazines with the piperidinyl side chain and phenothiazines with the piperazinyl side chain chlorpromazine promazine and trifluoropromazine are important drugs of phenothiazines with the alkyl side chain thioridazine and misoridazine are the examples of phenothiazines with the piperidinyl side chain and prochlorperazine trifluoropazine and flufenazine are the phenothiazine drugs with the piperazinyl side chain butyrophenones are haloperidol trifluoperidol droperidol and fluenazone thiothixines are chlorprothixine and thiothixine heterocyclics include dihydroindolones malindone is example loxepin is for dibenzooxazepine then clozapin is the dibenzodiazepine derivative Diphenylbutylpiperidines include pimozide, fluspirilin, and penfluoridol. Miscellaneous antipsychotics include sulpiride, lithium drugs, and a few other compounds such as resperidone, iloperidone, paliperidone, ziprasidone, luracidone, sertizol, zotepine, clozapine, olanzapine, aripiprazole, etc. From the above classification, phenothiazines, butyrophenones, thiothixines, and other heterocyclic compounds are categorized as conventional neuroleptics. They are classified as low, medium, and high potency. The prototype for low potency neuroleptics is chlorpromazine, medium potency flufenazine, and high potency haloperidol. All other types of neuroleptics are categorized as atypical phenothiazines. Clozapine, resperidone, and eripiprazole are examples of atypical neuroleptics. Antipsychotic drugs are also divided into two groups: the older, so-called typical antipsychotics, and the newer atypical drugs. The newer atypical drugs are now the drugs of choice for the treatment of schizophrenia, so the term atypical. The older drugs are now being called first generation, and the newer drugs are called second generation drugs. Name recognition here is sometimes a problem, but notice that most of the typical neuroleptics end in azine, and a number of second-generation drugs end in peridone. Here are the structures of phenothiazines with alkyl side chain: the chlorpromazine, promazine, and trifluoropromazine. Thioridazine and misoridazine are the structures of phenothiazines with piperidinyl side chain. Trifluoropazine, prochlorperazine, and flufenazine are phenothiazines with piperazinyl side chain. Butyrophenones such as haloperidol, trifluoperidol, droperidol, and fluanisone are shown here. They consist of a ketone flanked by a phenyl ring and a butyl chain, which forms the basis for many other chemicals containing various substituents. Haloperidol is most widely used classical antipsychotic drug in this class. Droperidol is used as an antiemetic for the post-operative nausea and vomiting. Thioxanthin is a chemical compound in which the oxygen atom in xanthin is replaced with a sulfur atom. The thioxanthins are closely related chemically to phenothiazines. The major structural difference is that the nitrogen at position 10 in phenothiazines is replaced by a carbon atom with a double bond to the side chain. This difference is noted in the illustration of structures chlorprothixine and thioxine which shows a double bonded carbon in the number 10 position which is opposite the sulfur atom in the central ring. Molindone is a dihydroindolone derivative which possesses indolone heterocyclic ring system. Loxapine is an example of dibenzoxazepine derivative and clozapine is a dibenzodiazepine derivative. Diphenyl butyl piperidines are the structures possessing two phenyl rings having fluorine atoms, a butyl connector, and a piperidine heterocyclic ring system. These include pimozide, fluspirilin, and penfluoridol. Sulpiride is a miscellaneous antipsychotic drug. We will discuss each type of these different classes of antipsychotics in the future classes. Clinical uses of antipsychotic drugs. Antipsychotic drugs are used to manage acute and chronic psychosis. In particular, they are used to treat psychosis like schizophrenia, mania, senile dementia, and behavior disorders in children. In addition to its antipsychotic properties, 
chlorpromazine is used to treat uncontrollable hiccups. Clozapine is used only in patients with schizophrenia that is unresponsive to other antipsychotic drugs. Lithium is effective in the management of bipolar illness. Some of these drugs such as chlorpromazine and prochlorperazine are used as antiemetic drugs. When given in small doses, neuroleptics are effective in the control of acute agitation in the elderly patients. This is the list of references followed for the lesson. That's all in this video, an introduction to antipsychotic drugs. In the next lesson, we will discuss the first class of antipsychotic drugs that is phenothiazines, their chemistry, structure activity relationships and the mechanism of action. Till then, never stop learning and never stop watching my videos. Thank you for watching this video.